Hello, oodles and noodles. It's been a while since I posted. I have been living life, moving into a whole new location. I've got a brand new fancy schmancy bookshelf in the back, which we are slowly filling up. Slowly, we still have another one coming in. Ikea is betraying us. It's betraying us. We wanted to have that fancy schmancy curved bookshelf, but it's been out of stock for like a month and a half, and it's driving us crazy so we've been being a little bit more gentle either way i still want to even though i have a lot more room for more books i really want to keep it um only buying books that i know i love or at the very least i might buy them but i'm not, definitely not going to keep a book that's just okay or it was good and i'm not going to read it again i really only want the books i really 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 love to stay on the shelf and today I'm going to talk about one of those books. It's not one of my favorites, but it's still something really enjoyable that you can kind of throw yourself back into every once in a while when you want a relaxed read. And that, my friends, is The Outstretched Shadow by Mercedes Lattigan and James Mallory. To be honest, I have no memory in my brain of James Mallory writing any other book that I've come across, but who knows? Maybe I have and I'm just having a brain fart, but Mercedes Lackey, of course, is quite a famous authoress, and this series, the Obsidian Trilogy, is really, really fun. It, as I said, it's not one of the best written books. If anything, it kind of, in some ways, kind of threads the line between a YA novel and a more epic style fantasy. It does really dive pretty deep into those typical tropes that we see about elves and dragons and demons, and it's kind of throwing that all together, but it does it in a way that's actually really relatable and really fun, for lack of a better word of saying it. So this story kind of starts off with our main character, Kellen, who is living in Armathalia, this City of the Golden Bells, this wonderful magical place that's run by mages and it's made out to be extremely amazing. The mages use their magic to keep the citizenry, you know, safe and warm. They don't get bothered by weather. Food is always really great quality. Everything is sort of perfect. It's just perfect. But of course, our main character is not happy. He is not happy at all. He is also in a position of authority, of power in a certain sense. His father is the Archmage, the leader of the Mage Council. He's running the city for all intents and purposes. And Kellen is growing up being raised to become uh, a mage himself. Only he really doesn't like it. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of regulations. He's 17 years old. He's a teenage boy. He wants to go out. He doesn't really fit in with that crowd of mages. He's stocky and physically capable, whereas, you know, from how you're seeing it, mages are kind of whimsical, wimpy little dudes. Uh, there are no women. Women are not allowed. They're emotionally incapable of being mages. So there's, there's these little things that we start to learn about Armathalia that make it out to be not so golden and very much more so controlling and the mages are very vapid and fake and all they care about is their power and there's of course many other things that we end up finding out that they're doing are not too right and circumstances of course end up leading our main character Kellen to leave the city and of course we start to, uh, discovering much more about the outside world and other kinds of magic and wild magic which is very anathema to the mages of the city it's very different it's very for all intents and purposes it's pretty crazy how that system functions and it's probably one of the most interesting characteristics of the book the wild magic how in most books, whether it's a hard magic system or a soft magic system, the magic very much usually comes from within. It's it's usually a thing of rules and regulations. Whereas with the wild magic, it's coming much more from elsewhere. And wild mages are more of a channel. They're are a medium for power to flow through. Although there are things they can do without there being huge consequences. There is, it, it's, this is very much a book of consequences and that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction there's a balance that constantly must be kept and 
it's really interesting to see this kind of interplay between there are supposed about three main magic systems you could think of the wild magic the magic being used by the mages of armathalia and the demon kind who use a very different source to get their powers so to speak something that's much more nightmarish something that's much more painful and something that is definitely not conducive to other races being happy about them being around <laughs> that, that. Uh, so without getting into too many spoilers Kellen obviously ends up on this journey of uh, where he is very much learning about the world learning about other races other peoples other places and that's something you really didn't get to see while living in Armathalia because it's a very restricted place where only certain things are allowed in and many people are not allowed to leave at all um, so you're you're kind of discovering this the world through Kellen's eyes and one of the strongest features of the book series uh, especially in his first book is that they don't try to make Kellen out to be this really amazing person even though he does get some things about him that are special you always see it through his eyes of he's confused he's scared he's unsure of himself he he's acting basically like a kind of sheltered 17 year old boy and he screws up sometimes and he gets emotional sometimes he and he's smart enough and self-reflective enough that he's working himself through these things but even through that self-reflection we can see someone who's very very unsure of the world and himself and his place in it and he doesn't know who to trust who to believe what to know what not to know and a lot of that is actually uh in relation to the magic that he's learning and the skills that he has to learn and the kind of responsibilities that he starts to slowly have so that's really really well done i think uh that in a certain sense is is kind of like that threading between a kind of coming of age story that a lot of the, that we see in ya's but it's in a serious enough back setting and the other characters around are developed enough that it doesn't kind of fall into too many of the YA tropes of just like things thrown at us without proper explanation. You kind of do get to know, you know, Kellen's father a little bit and how twisted he is. And you get to know quite a bit of the, the enemies that we're seeing in the other races. And there's not just this magical reasoning thrown at, for example, like races like the elves who are just like, oh, they're beautiful like this and they're perfect and this and that. No, if they're, you kind of see the contrast between the good about certain races or people specifically and the bad, there are conflicts between themselves. There's a lot of that, that getting into the nitty gritty about there's never just this one perfect answer, this one perfect person. There's always two sides to a coin. Uh, so that, that that's something the series does really, really well. There's some very, very fun action in the series. It builds up slowly, uh, but when it happens, it's done pretty darn well. Uh, again, you get to see kind of those consequences even in battle where someone does something and there's always something that doesn't go perfectly well. There's problems that arise from that so it, it's very well done there's a lot of aesthetic in this there's a lot of good detail in terms of showcasing little things again of uh, places and locations the world is, is very well realized even though many of the places we are at are small like little microcosms of the world but we really get to know a little bit of like what a person does to to, to survive in this one place uh, you know it's not this easy peasy i got magic everything's fine it's oh i still gotta do this and should i even use magic for that because i can just do it myself and so again this is very much a book of consequences and how the world is supposed to work so for someone who really enjoys i wouldn't say it's necessarily a very hard magic system but a magic system that always has to have checks and balances this is very very fun to read it's the same thing with the combat there's a lot of checks and balances in that um, the story is in terms of like the wider story how it's showcased at least in this first book i have read book two and three before but it was so long ago that i actually don't recall fully like the things that happened so i'm going to leave that for my next review but if I recall correctly, the story does build up quite well and things are more properly explained and expressed and we get to actually know a little bit more of the world, but at least within book one, the main storyline sort of our bad guy, it's kind of a little bit too easy, I would say, which is why I consider this to be a little bit more YA, where 
you know, our main ca uh, character just happens to be able to do this and happens to make it through that. And of course, the big baddies who are so, so bad and so strong and so evil, they happen to not like be around to actually just kill off our main character, which of course is a trope in fantasy that just unfortunately happens a little bit too much where the excuses and reasonings why a main character just doesn't get wiped out in his weakened form by the much stronger uh, enemies is kind of weak. Uh, it's, it's, it's a happenstance that just unfortunately is used a little bit too much in fantasy, at least in more epic fantasy, ones involving more of the typical sort of elvish kind of stuff. Um, but overall, it's a really fun series. They do some really interesting stuff with the magic systems. The main character is introspective enough, but realistic enough in terms of how he's acting, that it's fun to see his growth and development. The side characters around him, side characters, I would assume, we're not really getting much point of view of other characters, but when they do happen, it is interesting, it's fun to see, and they're not just these one-sided caricatures most of the time. Uh, and there's also some really cool ways that the authors are showing off other magical creatures and whatnot without it overtaking the story too much. So I would definitely recommend it if you want a quick, easy read that's fun and is showcasing off a couple of new, interesting ideas, at least in a way that's going to make you enjoy it and remember it. Uh, this is part of a handful of series that I like that are just kind of good to go to when you don't want to be overly taxed by a really, really heavy story, but have enough to them that you're not just there going up. Oh, it's whatever, you know, and you just forget about it. So check it out. Let me know what you think down below. I'm definitely going to try to get more into the flow of making videos again. I've just been really distracted with this move and there's been new things happening at work and promotions and it's crazy and I'm exhausted, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be, trying to be tough trying to make it work, just like Deku. I love this shirt. Yeah. So, like I said, let me know down below. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out the website, details.ca, and I'm gonna stop doing this. I don't know, I'm waving my fingers around a lot. Enjoy your day, my friends. Farewell.